Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Wadami, is opposing Dr. Tufosin's application for the High Court to order a probe into the conduct in the ongoing trial of two persons accused of willfully causing financial loss to the state. Out of forcing the minority leader in parliament and first accused in the ambulance procurement case, wants the AG's conduct probed following an allegation by the third accused in the case, Richard Jakpa, that the AG had been trying to recruit him to aid Dr. Forsen's prosecution. And apart from the order to inquire and inquire into the AG's conduct, Atu Forsen is also seeking an order of mistrial, an injunction and stay of proceedings in the criminal case. But the Attorney General says the application is unfounded. Let's get more on this. My colleague Elton Robey joins me with details. Now, Elton, this statement, the Attorney General says that there's a lot more reasons why he cannot grant this application. Tell us about that. Right, so for see, Governor Dami says that the application is a small screen and a bill that turned by Dr. Atoforsim to abort his legitimate prosecution for actions committed as a public officer, which led to the state losing colossal amount of funds. Mm. Same is incompetent as no one has immunity from prosecution under the laws of Ghana. The affidavit again continued to say. The AG in an affidavit deposed by a principal state attorney says that two claims in support of the application are laden with spurious allegations which are carefully and mischievously calculated at creating needless doubt about the ability of the court to dispense justice in this case. Again, the AG says even though the, appl the applicant levels many wild and untrue allegations against the attorney general, no disposition in the affidavit in support uh, of the attacks that attack the integrity of the court or hence at any decision or action by the trial court which impedes the capacity of the court to administer justice in this case. The AG denies virtually all allegations against him, including the claim that he could not respond immediately to the third accused, which is Japan's outburst in court, alleging the AG had tried to recruit him to aid in the prosecution of Atto Forsen. Rather, the principal state attorney says that the reaction of the attorney general to the unfounded allegation of the third accused was most professional as he was not a witness in the courtroom and was therefore not required to respond. Further, the Attorney General will have his day in course examination of the third accused person. The affidavit concludes that it is totally untenable for the applicant to be let off the hook on account of fabricated allegations by third accused persons aimed at assessing the applicant to gain unwarranted advantage in this trial. That the, that the integrity of the proceedings before the court remains intact as the proceedings of the court have been con conducted in open court with all parties given the opportunity to test the evidence given for and against in court in accord with the common law tradition. Mm, thank you so much, Alton Brobe, giving us updates because the AG has filed opposition to application to probe into his conduct in the ongoing trial in the with the minority leader are to force him let's do some other stories now because scores of residents living along the Accra Kumasi highway between Konongo and Kumasi were this morning captured on video siphoning fuel from an overturned tanker on the highway now although the Ghana National Fire Service continues to um, warn people about the danger of this practice it appears their caution is not being heeded let's get more on this joining us now via zoom is head of public relations at the ghana national fire service acfo timothy or safwa thank you so much for your time here on john newsroom any idea the circumstances surrounding this latest incident Mm. Well, you would have to unmute for me so that I can hear you clearly. Unfortunately, I can't hear you at to speak. If you just tuned in, we were discussing um, the concerns raised by the Ghana National Fire Service. On your screens now are visuals of individuals living along the Kumasi Accra Highway, Konongo to be precise, siphoning fuel from an overturned tanker and the Ghana National Fire Service is raising concerns that this should not be done in any way. Unfortunately, we can't hear you. 
Um, we're trying to reach the PRO of the Ghana National Fire Service. Its connection has been a bit difficult, but we'll come back to the story when we have him on. Now, let's take you now to Parliament because delayed tax waiver approval is compelling companies to flee Ghana. That's according to the majority leader, Alexander Feyomarkin. The majority is currently battling fierce resistance from the minority on the Finance Committee against the approval of some $350 million tax exemption for 42 companies. Now, speaking on the polls on Friday, the majority leader accused the minority of double standards for criticizing government when they have in the past granted over 800 million cities to Meridian Port Services, tax waivers to Meridian Port Services in 2014 alone. This company, invested $1.5 billion in that port expansion mm -hmm. project. Now, they brought a $950 million plus, let me quote the exact amount. The application that was brought by uh, Honorable Atu Forsen and Honorable uh, Monacote, mm. this deputy minister, they were deputy doing, finance minister, uh, deputy yeah. finance minister, Dr. Forsen, the minority leader right. of today. Mm -hmm. He was a deputy finance minister. He and Madame Monacote, uh, Monacote they brought the application to parliament. Mm -hmm. They brought an application of 982 million CD tax waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eventually, parliament approved 832 million. I am not criticizing the decision to grant tax waiver. I am rather because they qualified at the time. Of course, I am exposing their double standard, their double talk, and their hypocrisy. Now, let me read something more to you. Specifically, what this means mm -hmm. is that for every one dollar that MPS invested, mm -hmm. we granted them almost fifty-five cents in tax waiver. More than half of, right. of one dollar. Right. Now, apart from that, listen to this. The company was also granted an exemption. It was exempt from corporate tax for 10 years and a reduced corporate tax of 15% over another 10 years for an additional five years. And again, finally, they were excluded from paying taxes on dividend to shareholders for 20 years. Listen. For 20 years. 20 years. Meaning it's, it is still, it's, this contract is still in session. They started somewhere 2016. Exactly. Now, after you've given them waiver on importation of the equipment, raw materials, whatever, you again saying that the profit that they make, the dividends, they are first of all, they are not even paying tax on profits. Right. You again said that they are, the, the shareholders would also not pay tax mm -hmm. on dividends. Well, he said the delayed approval of these tax waivers has led to some businesses leaving the country as he fears others could also flee soon. Those who find the situation unacceptable will move to another country. This is it already happening? Pardon? Yes, it's already happening. And would have, to, would have to move because one of the things that attracted them here was because they were going to get that waiver. Mm -hmm. Two, their production cost is going to increase. And they are going to also put it on their price because if you are paying for everything and your cost is high, the consumer would, would, would have to pay. Three, it will mean that those who are going to stay, they are going to spend more chasing dollars mm -hmm. to import raw materials and equipment. So that would affect your local city. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Four, they will be slow. There will be a slow pace in expansion. Because it's already, you are running a business and your cost of production is high. You're always looking at cost. You don't think about pr production. Mm -hmm. You don't think about expansion. So you are going to limit yourself and then rather plow back the little profit and invest in another country. Finally, employment will not increase at the pace that is expected. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not increasing production, you start with 50 workforce. You are not likely within a period to increase the number of employment. Meanwhile, you have a chunk of the youth graduating from schools. Mm -hmm. So I am saying that they are oversimplifying it, as you said, and it is merely for the politics of it. Why do you justify the need for tax waiver 
to aid economic growth whilst in government. But when you get into opposition, you condemn it. The majority leader also demand claims the NPP is witch hunting members of the NDC. Listen. Harun Edrisu was very loud on government. Mm. Harun Edrisu never spared government, did he? No. Yet I remember that President Akufado said that, look, they have committed a wrong. Those the double salary two, issue. The double salary issue. He gave them an opportunity to pay back. Many of the extremists in the MPP said, no, they should be prosecuted. That was a straightforward case. That was a straightforward mm -hmm. case. I don't want to mention it. But a lot of the leading NDC MPs who were ministers were caught in that web. Akufado said, no. Why prosecute that large number of political class? No, it's not right. In any serious democracy, look at certain consideration. So what would be the gain if Arun Idrisu, Ama Kofibwa, Amama Yarga, and all others were thrown into jail? It was a straightforward case. Right. You've been paid double, you've taken it. We could have read dishonesty in it. We could have read fraud. But the government said no. So I don't want anybody to create the impression that this government is out there to attack its opponent. Let's, perhaps, eh, perhaps, if the extremists allow space, there could be backroom engagement. Mm. There could be discussions to look at the substance and deal with it and then forget about the trivialities. But some of these extremists will not give space for moderates to engage for a solution. I'm sure if somebody said financial laws to the states, all right? Mm -hmm. We have a new, uh, a new law on uh, uh, plea bargaining, mm. which allows you not to even plead guilty. Which allows you mm -hmm. not to even plead guilty, but perhaps re, uh, find a way to pay, pay back, back the money. refund to the mm. state. These are all explored. But, but in this case, the AG has rejected No, no, I'm this. not talking about okay. that. Okay. I'm, make, I'm, I'm doing, making a general statement. Mm -hmm. Don't get me into the AG thing. Okay. You've thrown out a general thing, mm. and I'm also coming out with a general thing, all right? Mm. We should know how to treat each other at the political space. We should know how to go about issues of national interest and not get personal. Mm. And both sides must demonstrate good faith. Some of our friends in the NDC, with the greatest respect, I'm not happy with some of the things that they do, okay? But I watch and I keep quiet because in one breath, one would, uh, you know, extend a hand, mm. then when you get the opportunity, you tie the person's hand, expose, embarrass the person. You don't do that. Mm. Still on the ambulance case, speaking on Newsfile, the NPP Director of Legal, Frank Davis, said the Attorney General did no wrong. Any can be said from what was given was that they had a disagreement over basic understandings of what was transpiring. The LC. Yes. They had a basic disagreement. Now, this person says this. This other person says this. At a point in time, I think the AG said, okay, you can say what you want to say. That is when... No, when, that if you, if you do it my way, it will not create any difficulty for you. And then the guy said, Japa said, I will not do it your way. Because if I do it that way, I'll, I'll, I'll come out as dishonest. And I'll not be doing fidelity to the proceedings. Fine. How can this be one of coaching? I'm having a conversation with you. <laughs> You say something. I also say something. We disagree on it. You stick your path, I stick my path. How can I be coaching? Could it be a failed attempt? It, it, it cannot be a failed attempt. Because if he had agreed, then he would have, would have done it the he way the agree. AD wanted. Okay. He didn't agree. That's the bottom line. He didn't agree. And, and you see, let us take all these things into contest. Mm. I still maintain, like you said, that this is a without prejudice conversation. Whether the AG was right to have called Jakpa, or Jakpa was also right to have picked up the AG's call, is another matter. When we get to that bridge, that bridge obviously will be crossed. In law, when we say without prejudice conversation, what do we mean? Educate our view. Without prejudice means whatever we are saying, we are not bound by it. So you say what you want to say, I say mine. But no one is bound by what we are saying. And that, that converse, communication cannot be used in the court of law. That is it. That communication cannot be used because it's without prejudice. Mm. So you see, this attempt, you see, and, 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 and let us be cautious the way we push this thing. In the first place, in the first place, 
the intent. They are talking about. At the NDC Communications Officer Sami Jemfi says the Attorney General's conduct makes him unfit to continue to occupy the office. No, that is correct. That is correct because crime, is if you check section 213 and 214, mm. fabrication of evidence. And 214, if I can, can I read one? But that will not be evidence. <laughs> ah, that is evidence. Oh, oh, okay. Medical excuse duty, bringing a medical excuse duty to the court to okay. say that you are sick when you are fit is what? It's, okay. It's yes. evidence for what? It is evidence <laughs> to get the court to adjourn, to allow the Attorney General, the prosecutor, to travel. The Attorney General cannot tell the court that give me, you know, an adjournment. He doesn't even trust his deputy and the DPP to take over the case when in his absence. He wants an accused person who is a witness. But that doesn't to contribute to the evidence. case. It doesn't contribute to the case. Okay. How the case, the judgment Whether will be Whether it contributes to the case or okay. not is irrelevant. Okay. 213 says anyone who fabricates evidence to deceive a court is guilty of perjury. And 214 defines what is that deception. It says that if you bring any circumstance to exist that deceives a court, you are guilty of perjury. So by telling him to go for a fake medical excuse duty, he was telling the witness to bring a circumstance to exist in court that would deceive a court. Then finally, yes. my brother, hmm. Mr. Pence keeps on saying that this evidence, even if true, borders on, on ethical conduct of the AG, it cannot impact. <laughs> I don't understand this. We are all trained lawyers, again. Don't we all know, Samson, that every accused person has a right to a fair trial? And if the accused person can show evidence that a certain trial is unfair, malicious, that can lead to the termination of the case through an order for mistrial, this if you look at even the affidavit that has now the, the application and affidavit in support of Mr. Jackpa, mm. asking for the termination of the proceedings. Okay. He is telling you that the Attorney General, he has evidence of the Attorney General telling him that he is innocent. He is not a target. He has no case to answer. But that due to pressure from the then Finance Minister well, and the President of the Republic, as you can see, so the, the court will determine that. As you Away from legal matters now, panelists on Joe News' latest national dialogue series are urging Ghana to carefully navigate its development alliances, warning a simplistic choice between East or West. They emphasize the need for a strategic approach advocating for government to first solidify the nation's own ideas and priorities through entrepreneurship and policy regime stability before aligning with international partners. There's more in the following report by my colleague Michael Ashali. More than 60 years after breaking free from colonial rule, Ghana's path has been marked by a complex web of external influences. The latest Join News National Dialogue series explored whether Ghana should set its sights towards the East or West. For many of our panelists, the answer is not straightforward. Here is former Executive Vice President of Unilever, Yao Intako. The rhetoric seems right. The reality is very far away. So for me, looking east or west is not really what the issue. What is at the storm center, the epicenter of what we are trying to do? The epicenter has to be that we are trying to secure the long-term health of our society. Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, who is with CDD Ghana, says our options are limited because of huge constraints. I think around the table there's clearly an emerging consensus that rejects this binary framing of the mm. issue, East or West, for a number of the reasons that both Yaos have enumerated. But I think the question also presupposes a certain agency on our part, right? I mean, to be able to look East or West, South or North, Northeast or Southeast, mm. assume that you are in a position of exercising some agency. We are in a place now where, uh, unfortunately, our options appear quite limited. Um, and, and so really, we, uh, when your options are that limited, uh, you also find yourself in a place where you may not be able to make the, the wisest bargains for yourself. For the coordinator at Third World Network, Dr. Yael Graham, the answer is not simply between East and West. The state can consider other countries. Escape the straitjacket of framing the problematic in terms of the two powers who are in contest with the United States or in contest with NATO. However, two key points emerged clearly in their commentary. 
we must be strategic and cautious, embracing a balanced mix of influences from both the East and the West. Importantly, they emphasize that we must first define our national aspirations. Arab, conservative, reactionary, authoritarian money mm. from authoritarian Arab regimes is shaping this our continent. So, so, I mean, when I saw the East or West, quite frankly, mm -hmm. I saw it as a play on Nkrumah's famous state. Mm -hmm. On the economic front, the professor of economics at the University of Ghana says we can start by encouraging entrepreneurship and prioritize value addition. We know that the destination takes quite a number of years. The destination is not a four-year election cycle. It is not eight years. And there is no continuity. You need to practice to perfect these, these models. Ghana and Ivory Coast are the largest producers of cocoa. Mm. Why can we not add a bit of value? Professor H. Kwesi Prempe believes without making some constitutional changes, we risk becoming a country without choices. Why don't we decouple you know, um, presidentialism from party politics. In other words, let's elect our president on a no party basis, mm. right? And we can confine the, uh, you know, uh, uh, political parties to the legislative elections. You know, I fear though that somehow we've written ourselves into a constitution that constrains us hugely in terms of moving forward. Dr. Yao Graham assessed that Ghana must diversify its interest beyond cocoa and gold. So, so, so there are lessons to learn from China and many other late industrializing countries. In the same way they were planting something before cocoa came. Mm. Some farmers who are growing, say producing cassava, for example, or yams, if we can grow in the same area, in economic terms, what the farmers may want to make a switch. Cocoa as, a, as, one, as a, one single crop which has caused the most deforestation in our history. Because it's always looking for virgin soil. But cocoa is an accident crop in this country. It's an accident crop. It could have been coffee. So, so even to think about the commodity dependence, and then you look at our extractives. Gold is a mineral which is much in demand. But compared to other minerals, gold is actually a relatively useless mineral. It is not as useful, for example, as clay. Yao Isako emphasized that to advance in agriculture and development, Ghana must first address the critical issue of land ownership. I do not know a country throughout human history that did not benefit from colonialism or slavery that made it to prosperity without radical land reforms. If we succeed, we will be the first in human history, and I wonder why we should be, we, we will be the only ones. So that's a major issue. For Joy News, Michael Ashali. Now we are your election headquarters. Regardless of the consequences, Ghana will never accept homosexuality. That's according to MPP flag bearer and Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia speaking during a meeting with the Regional House of Chiefs in the OT region. He said Ghana's religion and culture does not accept the practice, hence the country will stand firm against it. Nananum asama enam Ghana these days ah me pese me boso kakra eye LGBTQ asem no he se ma ware ma ne me ma ware me ma no eni die Ghana ye culture ye mpine so we will never agree we will never agree LGBTQ no uh, our religion doesn't accept it. Our culture doesn't accept it. So it's no, 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 no. Yen, 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 pineso. No matter what the consequences are, we are going to stand firm on our beliefs. Sanon, we will never agree to such a thing uh, in our uh, jurisdiction. Yen, 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 pineso. We will not do. Well, in interacting with some of the chiefs from the O2 region, they raised concerns about stipends owed some NAPCO personnel, urging the vice president to ensure the payments are made swiftly. NAPCO trainees are now here for about four years back. 
and uh, program no and I have some of them in my community and they confronted me nana matisse mo kwa ko share the vice president in the same way the idea you go there go and advocate for us we give it to your hands go and deliver it for us so that all be fear now now yes we are to be be a flow his excellency what our mama and say not go for an ebino stipend to be a come it's unpaid stipend and they have not received it and i know that flashy problem is directly under the office of the his the vice president please and please when is that unpaid stipend is going to be paid to them do i know the number of the that code trainees in ghana they are many the number is so huge very so huge and they are also going to vote please so when that unpaid stipend is going to be paid uh what can napko asem napko no dey uh at the makoma sopa because uh nami na i was one of the main movers for napko no napko no we've had them working for about four years uh about a hundred thousand people uh so far you triumphed to them over the four years over four billion uh or three point something billion ghana cities so but said a program no nd you know we still owe some stipends they will be paid i'm going to push for uh, the Ministry of Finance to pay those stipends to the NAPCO people. So, when COVID came, it dislocated the economy. In terms of saying we will not pay, but we owe it. Then saying, nursing and teacher training allowance, we will get to NAPCO as NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama has promised to introduce an insurance policy for motor riders if voted into power. The former president who met with motor riders at Ashiaman also assured them of his future government's partnership with a manufacturing company to produce electric motorbikes which will be given to them on credit. This is not the first time the NDC flag bearer has promised legalizing the operations of commercial motorbike riders popularly known as Okada riders. There's more in this report. Well, it's like 2020 all over again because NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama is promising to once again legalize the operation of Okada riders in town. We say that when he comes, he's going to make sure that they are not harassed by the police again. And he says that he's spoken with some companies to assemble uh, electric moto bikes in Ghana when he's elected president, which uh, will be given on high purchase, so Okada riders will have the opportunity to get it on credit and pay from time to time. Now, assembly plants for electric motor bikes. Ujiya,ubeyano now also at this event was the national president of Okada Riders Association. Our president incoming president he talk about okada this year the same thing he repeat about okada and we want the president to be aware the incoming president to be aware that inshallah it, we also want him to know that we are ready if he 
Alex, if, if you can go legal or Okada for us, yeah, we are also ready to do in that 24-7. Well, the Okada riders have also raised varying concerns about the activities in Ghana and want the NDC flag bearer to help legalize it when it's voted into office. It is uh, mostly if we are working, police will catch you. He will ask for your license. You provide your license. He shall answer you provide. What do you provide? The next thing he will say, Okada is illegal. So why are you doing Okada? I just, I just want Jomama at least when it comes to power to help so that they can legalize Okada. You know, we will follow the rules and regulations. They just have to legalize it. Because this, this, this work is really helping us. Me, I'm a dropout. You understand? I have no qualification. So this is the only job that puts food on my table. Moto figo ashama what cargo fillos yeah ten people fifteen people moto kara pesi go before I go ten you waste the fuel maybe I can't somebody go katama so I come I don't get nobody again I waste the fuel from there I carry traffic that guy drive a police car catch me say make a show my last day the insurance and stuff he dey pay as I say if you I go fuel now the whole day you work all I carry like ten people now ten the money go pay for ten way they say insurance and stuff I go fuel now they go as carry zero go out with our empty pocket and yeah, the family sleep, sleep for hungry inside with that you understand so this policy they bring I me mean, sweet me pa with the balance make you yeah. yeah. legalize them for you yeah. because more they're motor riding there now work no the town the work no shit that plenty so be this this motorway they help some boys before town maybe somebody go feed day you know get you know get money but i go feed pass inside get some kakra for him pocket inside everybody see so the motor need here is good it's good for you from the ashaiman toll booth Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Former Chief Executive Officer of the Mental Health Authority, Professor Joseph Bidiaku Asari, has called on government to redirect the COVID-19 levy towards creating a dedicated mental health levy, speaking at an event organized by the Gimpa Graduate Students Association of Mental Health, Professor Asari emphasized that the financial inadequacy severely hampers the Mental Health Authority and associate facilities' ability to provide essential care to individuals with mental health conditions. Mental health is an essential component of overall well-being, influencing how we think, feel and interact with others. Despite its importance, mental health often remains overlooked, leading to stigma and inadequate support for those in need. Psychiatrist and former CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Professor Joseph Bediakon Asari, is urging the government to redirect COVID-19 levy to a mental health levy. He stressed that reallocating this front will significantly support the financing of mental health services, ensuring better support and resources for those in need. There's always been uh, lip service. You always have to remind people to do what is right. We, as mental health professionals, we've tried our best to do what we can to get to this level. But if you met any of our uh, ministers, they'll tell you, yes, mental health is a priority. But then uh, the money given to mental health is such that not much is being done. Having created mental health authority, one will respect that the authority will stand firm, higher, and make sure that we move mental health to the level that we brought our mental health law to. Unfortunately, it's taken a long time for us to implement the mental health law, which seems to, by many people, even the virtual, saying that it's one of the best laws that we can have for a country. At the moment, the money that has to be given, dedicated money that has to be given to mental health, is not been given. And uh, we are proposing that the COVID, that COVID money that is being uh, deducted now, whether they could convert it into mental health, uh, money. I'm sure Ghanaians will not frown on that. At the moment, I think COVID is no more. And they must have a good reason using that money to support mental health. 
Daina Asalga, who is a graduate student at Gimpa, has emphasized it's important to pay attention to the mental health needs of men just like women. Men should not shy away from expressing whatever issues that they may have. Additionally, the communities and their partners should also support them and give them a listening ear. They shouldn't assume that because they are the head of the family, they should be okay at all the time. Men, mental health should also be prioritized. And this is an issue that everyone should kind of like engage in and have conversations around how best they can also um, support men who are victims of mental health issues. The public has been encouraged to take mental health issues seriously and seek help when necessary. Semifar Rejoice Pesu's report read to you. A member of parliament and NDC parliamentary candidate for Banda in the Bono region, Amadeha Ibrahim, has handed over what is to be the main market in the district to the chiefs and traders of Banda, Wangase. Sellers and buyers from across the country could not wait for the first phase of the 240 stall market project to be fully completed. The situation, Ahmed Ibrahim says, underscores the significance of the 1 million cities Banda fishing market and the potential of improving livelihoods in Banda. Precious Semifo has more in this report. Banda is a fishing district in the Bono region due to the Buidam Lake upstream, but it is without a central market, a situation that makes converging for trade a challenge as well as denies the assembly revenue. The MP Ahmed Ibrahim, in fulfillment of a promise, has handed over a partially completed Bandaman fishing market to the chiefs and traders at Banda Bongase upon the insistence of the people who say they can't wait for it to be completed before assessing it. While some scramble for a place in the market stores, others are erecting temporary structures to enable them sell their wares. The MP said in addition to his support to enhance effective trade and movement of goods, the 1 million Ghana cities market will improve access to livelihood opportunities. So this is the regional fishing market for the Bono region. And that is what necessitated the construction, the action that I put into providing and a market stall infrastructure for the people. Even beside that, I've gone ahead to buy outdoor motors, which will be used for the fishing fishermen in making sure that they are able to make a maximum catch to the market. Beyond that, I'm going to provide, establish a fund, which will assist the market women. So that so long as the fishermen are able to bring a catch, the market women will have the needed capital to be able to buy the items from the fishermen. And I've trained about 120 of the youth. I've given them lances. I'm going to give them the cars and the tricycles. They will be cutting the market women from their various communities to the market. And I'm going to give them the vehicles on work and pay basis. It's a way of economic empowerment, economic viability, women empowerment, creation of jobs, creation of employment, and you could see the number, the numbers there. Clearly, it is going to solve some of the challenges that we have in the country, the unemployment problem. While the chiefs, traders and fisher folks from Bato expressed their delight, they said they are using it whilst the MP completes the current 240 stores. This is our first market day at this new place and the numbers could be more next week. We used to trade in the mud close to the lake with horrible conditions when it rains. But with this facility, it will be better Do more needs to be done here. Though he has not finished, we want to work so he will be serious about completing it for us. We are happy. The national chairman of the NDC, Esie Duinketia, appealed to the market leadership to ensure proper sanitation at all times. As I say, we there will be filth after trading. Authorities must plan now to contain the filth in the market to uphold proper sanitation. Precious Semevo, Joy News, Sunyai. 
11-year-old British African Sarah Kito has handed over a refurbished e-library to St. Paul Methodist Preparatory School at Tema to enhance learning. The young writer, born to a Ghanaian father and a South African mother in the UK, sees this step as a way of contributing a quota to quality education. There's more in this report. The library at St. Paul Methodist Preparatory School at Tema is in two parts. The conventional library with books and the electronic library. Sarah Kito had the desire to give the place a facelift after visiting the school, which is her father's alma mater last year, to donate some books. The refurbishment of the library over a period of a year cost £10,000 from proceeds of her book sale and additional financial support by her family. Sarah Kito, as part of the project, donated copies of her books to the school and 20 computers with special programs to the electronic library. This is the first of a number of projects the young writer and philanthropist would want to carry out across the country to improve learning. Last year when I came, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to donate books to this library, but when they were showing me the library, I thought that I, I knew it could be better, so I decided to create this project where I refurbished the library so it um, is more comfortable for students to learn and um, interact with. I want to open up a reading and writing um, club in this school. So let's say somebody wants to write something. So it will be a competition uh, to write a short story almost and they will and then once they've gathered up all of it they will send it to us and then we will read all of them uh, assess it and then we will um and then we will choose a winner and then we'll see where it goes from there sarah kito's father albert kito is delighted his child has made one of her dreams a reality according to him such investment will introduce what is known as targeted learning when we talk about targeted education, it's not just about an everyday library where people go there and just pick books too. You, you just look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the, the threats, opportunities of people, and you, as a teacher, you'll be able to actually pick a particular program that you think will help the child to develop. So this sort of project is set uh, towards that sort of thing to enable children to develop their strength. It's not just having the generalized sort of education so the programs that we have on the computers and actually the books are ones that can be actually recommended per your strengths and per your weaknesses as you are, uh, you are as a student. So that is why this uh, library is important. The goal of this library is probably to develop a, a number of them across the country as well as across Africa. Prefect of St. Paul Methodist Preparatory School, Amma Inshra Isuman, is grateful for the gesture and shares how they will benefit from the e-library. First of all, I'm very happy to get these computers and then it enhances us to learn more and more. So I've learned some mathematics and then there are also fairy tales so I can listen to stories. I thank her for this generous donation. We really appreciate it and we are grateful because this will enhance the students for their learning experiences. Meanwhile, her teacher at St. Paul Methodist Preparatory School, Nana Kofibedu, expressed gratitude to Sarah Kito and her family. Our curriculum is something that we have picked from there. And so what we have failed to do is that we have always used traditional means. So with the technology now infused in our learning, then it brings out the innovation, the critical thinking and all other aspects that the child also needs to do to bring out what we call the quality education. We express our gratitude to Sarah and the Kito family. It is that we have so many people around, but only few may uh, have that willing to, to, to sacrifice. It is not easy these days, economically everybody is challenged. So when you have somebody um, cough out as much as 10,000 pounds to do a project like this, I think we have to be grateful and we thank them. The school children, teachers and participants were treated to performance from a cappella group, Alabaster Box. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
You're watching Joel Newsroom. We're taking a quick breather. We'll be back with more stories. Just stay tuned in. Thanks for staying with us. Now, young girls in Ghana have been urged to take pride in their periods as a sign of womanhood. Deputy Director of Diversity and Inclusive Education Unit of the Ghana Education Service gave the advice during a seminar to mark World Menstrual Hygiene Day for more than 500 girls drawn from the Adentan Ponkatamanso and Shai Osudoku municipalities in the Greater Accra region. Joe News' Amma Cromwell attended the seminar and filed this report. The event, organized by Young Trust Foundation and UNESCO in collaboration with the three municipalities, brought together over 500 adolescent girls from basic and senior high schools. It was under the theme, Empowering Young School Girls, My Period, My Confidence. Retired Deputy Director of Education, Diana Oseteria, called on parents and teachers to educate themselves about menstrual health to help end the stigma associated with periods and also to teach girls that experiencing these changes is perfectly normal. By focusing our efforts on providing menstrual hygiene products, we are just meeting a basic need. We are investing in the potential of every girl to become a leader, innovator and change. Maker. She further urged young girls to embrace their periods with confidence, seeing it is a testament to their femininity and power. Your period does not define you. It is a natural part of life that should be celebrated, not feared. It is a reminder of your body's ability to create life, to grow and to change. Embrace it with confidence, knowing that it is a testament to your femininity and power. In a speech read on her behalf, Deputy Director of Diversity and Inclusive Education Unit at the Ghana Education Service, Nana Amamensa, urged the girls not to be ashamed of having their period, but to take pride in it as a sign of their womanhood. As young women, it's crucial for us to discuss and address the challenges associated with menstruation. First and foremost, as females, let's acknowledge that menstruation is a natural process, a sign of a healthy body, a symbol of fertility. Yet, unfortunately, across various societies, it's still a subject often veiled in stigma, myths and silence. Though there have been significant works in addressing these barriers, more work needs to be done in order to create an environment of openness, understanding and support. Project Director of the Young Trust Foundation, Benedicta Santi, advised the girls not to allow menstruation to impede their social life. If you are menstruating as a young one, you should be confident, you shouldn't be timid, you shouldn't say just because of my period, I'm staying back at home, I won't go to school. All these um, do not bring out the best in our young ones to get a break. Let's take you now to the Aviation Center where we're having the hit FM Rep Your Jersey. It's live and it's happening right now. It's Ghana's finest entertainment radio show and it's all around this country. Well, you're welcome to the Aviation Social Centre. We are live, coming to you live as the Hits of Them Wrap Your Jersey, the 13th edition. First of all, listen, this event has been running for 13 years. Now that deserves a round of applause. Wherever you are, if you can hear me, give us a round of applause because it's not easy. Sustain an event, keep it running for 13 years. It's no child's play. But listen, the place is packed. Well, not that packed. We are, wa we are still warming up. But there are a number of people here really having fun. I mean, you can, this is the video game center where a number of people are currently playing video games, uh, PS5, football, and all of that. And I hear there's this particular lady who is whooping the guys here. Oh, unfortunately, the lady isn't here. But I have a number of guys. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. They're really having fun. I mean, you, you want to tell us how, how much fun you're having? 
So yeah, I'm really having fun. Right. Game, yeah, I'm, 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 so what are you doing right now? Yeah, we are playing a tournament. So who is who is winning? Yeah, I'm the one winning. You're the one winning. Oh, you're losing? I'm losing. Oh, sorry. Uh, big time lose. Big time lose. He's losing to four nil. Four nil, huh? But what do you think about the event? I mean, the so far. It's, it's very amazing. Yeah, right. it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, of course, we are gearing up towards the grand finale of the UEFA Champions League between Hala Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. Who are you rooting for? Dortmund. Oh, now we'll pass. How are you? Dortmund all the way. How are you? Madrid or Dortmund? I'm in mean for full against. Huh? Full against Madrid. Against, against Madrid. Why? Because they, they've won the competition for 14 times. We can't let them... Aqua or your or your negative. You have an engagement. man. But yeah, there are a lot of guys having fun at the video game centre, playing PS4, having fun football and all. But if you look here, we have basketball also ongoing. But before I show you, well, there's Dr. Pounce here. Dr. Pounce, he is um, a presenter with us at Hits FM. Yeah, and I'm sure Noella is interacting with Dr. Pounce. You should make your way to the aviation center right now. Hits FM rep your jersey is happening live and the place is packed. We, the Chelsea fans, we know that the future belongs to us. So let's just chill while Manchester United and Arsenal, they try their thing. It's just, just temporal. Well, that's it for Joy Newsroom. For more news, please log on to myjoinline.com. My name is Fostia Sapo. Good afternoon.